Consider the first order ordinary differential equation dy dt equals f of t comma y with initial condition y of t0 equals y0. Before we try to find a solution, we should answer two questions. First, does a solution exist? We would like to know that this initial value problem is actually solvable before we work too hard to find a solution. Second, if a solution exists, is it unique? This question is important because if this differential equation models a physical system, we need to know that we have a unique solution before using a solution to make a prediction about the system. Otherwise, if there are multiple solutions, how would we know that we have chosen the right one to make the prediction? Fortunately, we have a theorem that gives simple conditions under which this initial value problem has a unique solution. Informally, the theorem says that if f of t comma y is continuous near the point t0 comma y0, then a solution exists. Additionally, if the partial derivative of f with respect to y is also continuous near the point t0 comma y0, then the solution is unique. First, let's talk about existence of the solution. Suppose f of t comma y is a continuous function in a rectangle containing all points t comma y with t between a and b and y between c and d. If t0 comma y0 is a point in this rectangle, then there exists a positive real number epsilon and a function y of t defined for all t from t0 minus epsilon to t0 plus epsilon that solves the given initial value problem. In other words, as long as the function f of t comma y is continuous in a rectangle, even a tiny rectangle that contains the point t0 comma y0 in its interior, then there exists a function y of t that solves the differential equation that passes through the point t0 comma y0, and this function is defined in at least a tiny interval around this point. Let's look at an example dy dt equals y divided by t. For any point t0 comma y0 with t0 not equal to 0, the function f of t comma y equals y divided by t is continuous in a rectangle containing t0 comma y0. Thus, the existence theorem tells us that a solution exists through t0 comma y0. However, the function f of t comma y equals y over t is not continuous, it's not even defined for t equals 0, and thus the theorem doesn't tell us whether any solution exists through points where t equals 0. Second, let's talk about uniqueness. Suppose f of t comma y and the partial derivative of f with respect to y are both continuous in a rectangle, containing all the points t comma y with t between a and b and y between c and d. If t0 comma y0 is a point in this rectangle, then there is a unique solution y of t, defined for all t from t0 minus epsilon to t0 plus epsilon that solves the initial value problem. In other words, if the hypotheses of the uniqueness theorem are met, and if you think there are two functions, y1 and y2, that both satisfy the initial value problem on the interval from t0 minus epsilon to t0 plus epsilon, then in fact these two functions are the same, y1 equals y2 on this interval. Since the conditions for the uniqueness theorem are stronger than those for the existence theorem, the two theorems are often combined and stated as one existence and uniqueness theorem. Returning to our example, dy dt equals y divided by t. We said earlier that a solution exists through any point t0 comma y0 with t0 not equal to 0. Since the function f of t comma y equals y divided by t and its partial derivative with respect to y, 1 divided by t, are both continuous in a rectangle containing this point, the uniqueness theorem tells us that the solution through this point is unique. However, as before, the theorem doesn't tell us what happens at points where t equals 0. What is this unique solution? Either by separating variables or making a good guess, we can see that y equals y0 divided by t0 times t, this linear equation, satisfies the initial value problem. Thus we know now that this line is the unique solution through any point t0 comma y0 where t0 is not equal to 0. Notice what happens if t equals 0. Remember that the theorem doesn't tell us anything in this case because y divided by t is not defined when t is 0. Yet this example shows that two things can happen. First, many solutions pass through the point 0, 0. Specifically, the differential equation dy dt equals y divided by t is satisfied by any line y equals c times t and all of these lines pass through the origin. However, no solution passes through any point 0 comma y0 with y not equal to 0. To see this, suppose that y of t is a solution that passes through 0 comma y0. If you follow this solution into positive or negative values of t, then the uniqueness result implies that y of t equals c times t. But this is a contradiction, because y of t equals c times t 
doesn't pass through any point on the y-axis other than the origin. When using the existence and uniqueness theorem, keep two things in mind. First, the theorem only makes a statement about what happens near t0, y0 in some possibly small interval around this point. It doesn't say anything about what happens far from this point. It could be that there is a unique solution near t0, y0, but multiple solutions elsewhere. Second, the theorem is not an if and only if statement. If the hypotheses for the theorem are not satisfied, then the theorem does not make any conclusion at all. We conclude with one more example. Consider the differential equation dy dt equals 3 y to the 2 thirds. Since the right hand side, f of t comma y equals 3 y to the 2 thirds, is continuous everywhere, a solution exists through any point t0 comma y0. However, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is 2 times y to the minus 1 third, which does not exist when y is equal to 0. So the theorem does not say whether the solution through any point t0 comma 0 is unique. We find that the general solution is y of t equals the quantity t plus c cubed for some constant c. Yet there is also an equilibrium solution y equals 0. Thus, the solution through any point on the t-axis is not unique.